playing most of the part, maybe apart from obviously drums, which we were, we were either sequencing or using Lin drum computer. Um, most of the parts were played, mostly by Joe Callis or myself, Philip and Adrian playing some parts. Um, and also, we, we, because we couldn't sequence them like you would now on, on Cubase or Pro Tools or something, and you could layer them up, um, you've then got to think about how you take that out on the road. And we were using multi track tape machines, and Joe would do a song with maybe half a dozen different keyboard parts on he played. And then but when we went on stage, there was only me and Joe as keyboard. I mean, we got. Ten fingers and four hands between us, but there was just too many, too many parts. So we had, um, yeah, we had other keyboard players to come in and and augment it for us. Um, I think the very first thing we did, we, we didn't have the Lin drum, so we had this Roland System 100 to do percussion, and um, uh, so that was doing, yeah. So emulating sort of bass drum and snare and I was working with Philip O'Key on something and fiddling with um, a white noise generator on it to get this hiss sound like that doing eight beats and he asked me what I was doing I said I'm, I'm trying to um, create like a hi-hat sound and he had no idea what I was talking about he'd never heard of a, a hi-hat so actually if you listen to Human League Records before that, there is no element in there that's like a hi hat. But that system 100 was, yeah, was essentially putting down a rhythm track, and then it would build that that from that way, from the bottom drums and bass up, then through melodies and chords up to the vocals. Um, so that was that was pretty much the way most things were done. Drums first. Then add a bass, you know. Get a rhythm going and add some bass to it. And the, the um, favoured machine was the Korg 770, which is, I think this is Korg 770, is it not? The 700, it's close enough, close enough. So that, I think on the, the Dare albums, the first one I, I worked on was, um, I think most of, the bass parts on that album were done with the Korg 770 because um, you could do some quite punchy sounds and there's a song like a song like um, Seconds which is where the bass is almost a, a single note drone changing changing notes all the way through and that's a much more sus sustained sound and I think with things like that we would um, very often do a couple of passes, so record it twice and on the tape to uh, fatten it up a bit more. I suppose these days you would just do that automatically, probably add a little few milliseconds delay to the original and fatten it up. But um, yes, and then, then um, once we got to the studio, we got this Lin drum computer which had real drum samples on it and it was much easier to program um, rather than only having six, 16 note sequence like you had on the, the rolling systems um, you could create bars and then string those all together and do bars with different beats and bars with drum fills added in it seemed a much much um, more effective and easier way to be working um, so yes, that's how the, the Lin came in, and um, that would be the starting point for every recording. Put down a um, synchronisation track, basic drum beat on the Lin, then add bass, add chords and all the other bits, and then go back and rethink the programmed drums according to what was going on in the track and add, add drum fills and cymbals and, and stuff like that. That would usually be pretty much the last part of the process, that last 
end of end of production tarting things up. No, it was it was never done that way around. I mean, I mean, when I'm doing stuff myself, I tend to work start with chords and vocals and, and write a song, and then go back and add everything. But the Human League way of doing everything, which I suppose is essentially Philip Oakey's way of doing things, is to start with drums, then bass, and then build it up, and then go away and think about something to sing over the top. So, um, which is it's one way of working, you know. Well, I suppose traditional songwriters work, tended to work completely the other way around. But, uh... hey. No, it, it was just that was the equipment that was there. There was the, the we had a little studio in Sheffield, and um, when I was um, asked to help out with the next album we just I just used what equipment was already there so there was this Roland System 100 the Korg 770 there was a Yamaha which I can't remember which which one it was um, and there was a Roland Jupiter 4 so there's just the four machines and that's pretty much actually with the Dare album it's pretty much those four machines but then we, we added the Lin drum. We added that, which gave a bit more oomph to the rhythm section. And our producer, Martin Russian, had the rolling system 700. So when you hear stuff that is sequenced rather than played, it, that tends to be, tended to have been done on the rolling 700 system, um, programmed with Roland MC8, I think it was, sequence. Um, the, the thing was, with, with that sort of technology, the MC8, and there was one called an MC4, but you had to actually enter every piece of information. So if you think, even, even the simplest one single note, you've got three values. There's where it occurs, how long it is, and what value it is in pitch. So for every note, you've got to add three numerical um, parameters for it, for every single note. So then when you get into, um, and Martin, our producer, did this, on one track, did this amazing brass section, which was a typical brass section. Of course, it was three parts, as you would have with a brass section, two trumpets and a saxophone or whatever. And he programmed all three parts, and not not just notes where they occurred, how long they were, but he actually put in um, dynamic um, elements as well. So that's all, again all new numerical entries to sort of have the pitch alter, so that the brass is swelling, and um, to have slight slight bends in the notes and stuff. Every little bit of it was a, a numerical entry um yeah took forever i think the brass section part took about four days to do so, was of course now you would just you've got three fingers for one, one for each for each of the three elements of the brass section and you could just play it and then on on the screen just yeah just do that swell and change the pitch a bit and etc and it would take well it would take me about 15, 20 minutes, I would think, in order to be happy with it. But yeah, compared to four days, yeah. Mm. I would say so, yeah. I think on the album it lists the equipment used and it's five or six synthesizers, maybe seven, I don't know. It's, um, but I, th I mean, I I think, in terms of Korg, certainly that 770 was fundamental because that was holding the bottom end down and doing. I used to use it for a lot of riffy type things as well. The first thing I ever did with the Human League, uh, Sound of the Crowd, it was, the 770 was the bass part and it, the, the 
sort of lead riff that went all the way through was also done on that. And it was a very, very punchy, powerful sound. And it was a hit record. Yeah. <laughs> Which helps. It's quite good, actually, when the first thing you do with a band is their first top 20 hit. Quite odd, really. You're going into your local record shop and there's someone in there in front of you and buying your record. It's... 